got a lot of work to do. <laughs> And so I, I thought to myself, man, I must stay thirsty 
all the time. <laughs> because I feel hungry, but the, what, what's happening is that my body is miscommunicating with me. Uh, my body's making me think I need to eat, but really what I need is water. Uh, I'm thirsty, but I just feel like I'm hungry. And you know, the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. He can know it. So not only does your body mislead you into thinking you're thirsty, I mean, you're hungry when you're really thirsty, but our hearts deceive us into thinking that we need all these other things when really what we're after is that spiritual water. We're spiritually thirsty, but it manifests in so many different ways. We, we go after money and, and success and, and, and uh, you know, whatever, whatever our, our deceitful heart puts in our minds to think is what we need to chase. But really the root of our problem, what we're really in need of, is to go to that well and drink of that spiritual water. That's what we need. We need to go to the well. And like I said, there are many wells. I've got a well. Most people live in the county. you got a well. I know my, my brother-in-law, he lives on top of the mountain. His well is 600 feet deep through solid rock to get to it. So that's just a well, and the water gives out of that well. I've got a well at my house. It's, I don't know how deep it is, but it gives out pretty good water. But the thing is, that's not the kind of well that we're talking about. The well is Jesus Christ. I just want to make that clear. Jesus Christ is the well where you will find the spiritual water. And he says here, But whosoever drinketh of the water out of the natural well shall, shall be thirsty again. And, and that's the way it is. You, you, you drink it and you get thirsty again. When, you're, when your deceitful heart has got you chasing riches and, and, and chasing dollars and, and, and chasing... Fast boats and oh, did I say that? <laughs> and, and and Cadillac Escalades. You know, even if you get all that stuff, even even if you get all that stuff, you can you can be chasing success and get success and not be drinking from the well and still be thirsty. You'll always be missing something. You will always have that thirst until you go to the well, which is Jesus Christ. And so no matter what we're chasing, I don't know what you may be chasing, but I know what you need to be chasing. You need to be chasing that well. So many of us, uh, and, and you know, some of us have never found the well in the first place. We, we've never found the well because our hearts are leading us in the wrong direction. You cannot always listen to your heart. And you know, what, the way I could find the, that spring on the tobacco farm, the way I could find it is I just go down and I look for the dipper. If I could find the dipper, I could find the spring, which was my little well. And so the dipper led me right to the well. Well, I'll tell you, if you don't know where the well is, the well, the well is Jesus Christ. If you need to find the well, I've got some directions for you. I've got a device that will point you straight to the well. It's called the Holy Bible. I'm telling you. And it's got a cross. That cross. If you follow that cross, you will end up right at the well. Yes, and, and but many of us, many of us know where the well is, and we've been to the well and we've drank of the well, but then so often we forget where the well is and we go off and, and forget about the well. And I, I know there's some here today that have forgotten where the well is. Well, I want you to know you need to find your way back. The way back is easy. It, it, all you have to do is follow Jesus. The way back is found right here. Right here. And, you know, I, I can't help but to, to think what would happen. Well, matter of fact, it did happen there a couple of times. Because I'll tell you what happened. I got to drinking out of that natural well so much, and I got gone from the tobacco field so much, my uncle took the dipper and he hit it. <laughs> and took it with him. And so I was down in the woods looking all around and said, where in the world? I done lost, I done lost my bearings here. I can't find, can't find the spring. I don't know where it's at. And, and I looked all right, looked and looked and looked, and I could not for the life of me find the well because I had lost the, the one thing that gave me the bearings to get to it. And you know, that's what has happened to so many people today. We've lost our bearings on how to get to the well. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you can find your bearings back. You don't need a dipper, you don't need a big old church sign. All you need to do is open up this book right here. It'll lead you back to the well. Because the well is Jesus Christ.
Christ. And, and the water in that well is living water. And, and the Bible tells us, he, it, will, it says here, But whosoever drinketh of the natural water shall thirst again. That natural water, it'll let you down every time. <coughs> the natural pursuits that we have, anything we're pursuing that's not according to the will and way of Jesus Christ is going to leave us thirsty and hungry for more. But there is another water, a water that's not a natural water. And Jesus says of this water, but whosoever drinketh of this water I shall give him shall never thirst. And I'm telling you right now, if you're thirsty because you've lost your way to the well, it's your own fault. It's not the fault of Jesus. The water is there. And your thirst can be quenched if you will go back to the well. And he said, this water, this water that I shall give him shall be in him a well. See, when you drink this living water, it gets inside of you and you have your own well. Your own well come, becomes inside of you and it springs up living water. And what is that saying? What exactly is Jesus saying here? Because <laughs> I would be a little confused if I was this lady. And Jesus told me, well, if you drink this water, I'm going to become a well in your stomach. And I'd be like, well, then I'd be like gushing out water. That wouldn't be any good. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He says, when, when you get, when you go to the well, you get that living water. And what is the living water? The living water is God's word. When you get that word inside of you, it becomes a well in you and it starts springing up in you. You know, when you, when you read the Bible, it's doing something to you whether you know it or not. Even if you're in here and you don't know Jesus Christ or you may be far from the Lord, the Word of God is doing something to you because the Bible says God's Word will not return void. It will accomplish its purpose. And so when we leave here today, even if it's in a small way, you're going to leave here a different person than you come here because you've been to the well. You've been exposed to that living water. And that living water gets down deep inside of you. I talked to a guy uh, to, uh, just the other day. He was going through some stuff and he called me up and he was he was reading the Bible and he, he got to this one part and it's kind of a big word and, and, and he stumbled a little bit and I just finished it for him. I didn't even have a Bible open. I just knew the verse and I just finished it for him. He said, man, that's amazing. How did you do that? I said, well, when, when you get it inside of you, it's just it just automatically comes back out of you. And that's what God's Word does. When you get it inside of you, it springs up. That living water comes out of you. And you may not be able to memorize Bible Scripture, but the love of Jesus, the, that living water comes out and manifests itself as love and encouragement, building up people. You know, your tongue is a mighty weapon, and you can speak life into people. That life is the living water. It's springing up inside of us, and it's my prayer that everybody in here would have springs of living water just overflowing to them. And you know, it's kind of like, you know, I, I want to be blessed, okay? I'm just going to tell you, I love being blessed by the Lord. And I'm blessed. Surely I am a blessed man. But now, uh, let me tell you why I like being blessed so much. The reason I like being blessed is because my blessings overflow me just like the living water overflows me. When God gives me a blessing, it's such a blessing that, that it, it's more than I can handle and I have to pass it on to others. You know, He blesses me with material things that I can pass on to others. He blesses me financially and I can pass it on to others. He blesses me in a spiritual way where I can pass on spiritual blessings to others. Encouragement, discipleship, training, it's all blessings that overflow me. I don't want a blessing just to myself. I want blessings that overflow me, just like the living water overflows me and goes out into the community. Everybody I come into contact with, whether they're ready for it or not, they're going to come in contact with the living water. Amen. Yes, Lord. And that's what it's all about. That's what that living water springing up inside of you is all about. We got to go out in the world and get some people wet. That's what we got to do. <laughs> We got to go out in the world and expose some people to the water so much they'll be hauling for life jackets. That's what I, that's my prayer. That we would get some people wet with that spiritual water that flows not from a well, but from the well. That's where we need to be drinking from. Yes, we springing up into everlasting life. How is that? How can the, that we said that? 
the, the living water is really God's word. And it, it gets inside of us and it springs up and overflows us. And, and he says right here, it springs up and, and overflows into everlasting life. How is that? Well, the Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let's all say that loud. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And where is that word of God? It's coming straight out the well. Who is the well? Jesus Christ is the well. But if we are if we are part of the body of Christ, then we're wells too. We are wells just like Jesus because we are Him. He's in us and we're in Him. So the living water should flow from us and it flows into everlasting life when we tell people about Jesus and share the gospel with them. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We've got to bring the Word of God to this community, to this nation, to our little ones. So, that, so by hearing, they can have salvation. That's what we're after, that living water. And it's not only, the, the living water is not only good for salvation. I know, I know a lot of us are going through some stuff. I don't even know where this comes from, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> I believe the Holy Ghost can purify it no matter what's in it. It ain't white lightning, so I think <laughs> If it is, it's mighty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know in a minute or two. <laughs> You know, that, that living water and, and the purpose for going to the well to get that living water is not only for blessings to overflow us and, and not only for everlasting life, but it's to help us live the life that we have. I don't know about y'all, but every now and then I run into a little trouble. That's probably just me because I'm sure none of y'all experience that. But you know, believe it or not, some people, some good Christians... You know, run into some trials and tribulations that are sometimes almost unbearable and they don't know how they're going to get through them. And it's at times like that, more than any, that you need to go to the well. You need to go to the well. The, the song we just sang, the well, I, I heard that song sang by the guy that wrote it. And I was uh, at the concert with, with the youth group and we were there. And Mark Hall, he said, and he quit singing and he said, Lord's laid it on my heart. I want, I want to have a word with all the preachers that are in this building. And, uh, and I was just sitting there and all, all the kids were like, go, go, go. I'm like, no, nah, I don't, that's all right. I'll, I'll catch you another time. And next thing I know, they've been pushing me out into the aisle. It's like I was riding a wave out into the aisle. And, <laughs> And they just led me next to me. And then once you got out in the aisle, the other one's just pushed you. So I just like rode the wave out to where he was supposed to, to be at. And uh, and I, I really didn't want to part of it. I was just standing there. And the crowd, as the crowd grew, I just kind of kept easing my way back. And they were just growing and growing. It looked like about 200 people there. And I just, I just kept easing my way back like this right here. I was like, they can have it all, you know, whatever. And, and I was all the way up against the door, had my back, because they were crowding me. And I was feeling a little anxious there. And uh, next thing I know, the door behind me opened up. And there's this black guy, about that tall, shoulders about that wide, carrying a gun. He said, you here to see Mark Hall? And I'm like, I guess. <laughs> you want me to be here to see him? He said, come with me. And so he grabbed my shoulders and took me, took me into this room. And when, when he took me in there, the, the other 200 people were following me, and he said, he had me by my shoulder, he said, stand right here. I was like, yes, sir. This, this is good. I'm, I'll stand right here. And uh, so I come out, and the next thing I know, here comes Mark Hall from Casting Crowns, and he comes out, and he stood in front of my face, and he said, I just want y'all to know, Lord, Lord laid it on my heart to stop singing and call y'all back here. He said, because I got a word from the Lord for somebody. And he said, I don't know exactly who it is, but I got a word for somebody. He looked at me straight in the eyes the whole time. And he said, he said, I want you to know, you're getting ready to go through some stuff. And he said, the only thing that's going to sustain you is if you drink deep from the well. 
And I, and I never, I didn't really understand what he was talking about. But okay, all right, good. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. And uh, so, and I went out and went back, and everybody's like, "Well, did, how was it?" I said, "Well, you know, it was, it was good." <laughs> he said he had a word from the Lord for me to go through some stuff, and he told me some stuff to do when I went through the stuff, and uh, give me a little piece of paper. And uh, then about a week later. Guess what? Started going through some stuff. <laughs> but you know how much, most people, ninety-nine percent of the people, would have would have listened to what he said and went in one ear and out the other. But it kind of scared me a little bit when he told me that. So I I started doing that. I started going. I said, Lord, I need. I'm going to the well. This man said, I need to go to the well. I'm going to the well. I need to go to the well. And, and about a week later, I'm telling you some stuff came into my life. And, and the verses that I had been reading in the Bible that the Lord led me to open the pages to are the very verses that got me through that next little time of tribulation. So I want you to know you need to drink deep from the well. Jesus Christ is the well. And, and I hope your life goes good. And I hope nobody in here ever has any trials and tribulations. But let me tell you this. Don't wait until you are in the midst of the trial. To go to the well. Go to the well first. And be well nourished with that spiritual water. Then it will be the one in you that fights your battles for you. Because the Bible says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And I believe that. And I, I just pray that we can all meet him at the well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you so much for this day and all your many blessings. Lord, you're so good to us. I pray that you would just be with us now as we're going to our time of uh, invitation. I pray that if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they would come forward, Father. Uh, just give them the courage and the strength to, to make all things new, Lord. Now, you just be with us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as the ladies come up, and I, I think, I'm just going to say this is my water. I just don't want to be <laughs> It's my water from last Sunday. I just didn't drink it all. It's mighty good. But if you, if you need to come to the well, I'm going to tell you the well is here. The well is open. And there's plenty of living water left in the well to nourish you. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come on up and give him your life. Nobody, I don't think nobody has ever regretted giving their life to Jesus Christ. I know I have. I've never Regret. The only thing I've ever regretted is not doing it sooner. That we're not looking to the past, we're looking to the future. And your future is bright if you have Jesus Christ. So let's all stand and sing.